Welcome to the week one go-to session. This is the first of four such sessions we're going to be hosting this month. Uh, thanks to the people who showed up, this session is also being recorded. Uh, for those who could not attend live, these sessions will always be held every Monday night at 7 p.m. Um, if you can attend live, great. If not, um, yeah, there will be recordings. And the recordings are always, let me show real quickly. Uh, let's see. Okay, so here's like an overview of all the assignments that we're going to do this month. And each week there's a little activity called the week one or two or three or four lecture archive, and that's where the recordings will be placed. Okay, and actually let's begin with some kind of bureaucratic stuff. Um, this is the FSO platform, of course. Uh, the quickest way to get in contact with me is to use the actual message function. You do have the ability to leave comments under any activity, uh, but that's... Those are sort of harder for me to spot, and every so often one of those can fall through the cracks. Uh, because from the student's viewpoint, it seems obvious. If I leave a comment, the instructor will surely see it. And I do try my best to spot them. Uh, but when you send me a direct message, that's the easiest way to reach me. Okay. Um, and yeah, the FSO platform should be your number one way to contact me. Um, email. I mean, I do try to check email every day, but I'm not as good or I'm not checking email as often. Okay, and because the FSO system here for a long time now has had this messaging function, that's the quickest way to reach me. Um, okay, let me get back to the presentation a little bit. Um, welcome to English Composition. This first lecture is going to cover some basics about the class, and then we're going to get into what we're working on this month, okay? All month we're working toward a single essay, and we're going to get into exactly what that essay is. Uh, but first, some kind of overview information. You have all this information, the syllabus, course resources, my office hours, etc., cetera, um, under a number of documents. Okay, I think my office hours are under the meet the instructor activity. The syllabus and course resources, I believe, are under your about tab. I think that's what it's called on the student's end. A little about uh, icon that you have to click on, and you should see all those documents there. I'll allow you to read through those on your own. Um, yeah, Full Sail has a writing center. Um, you, if you're on campus, you can have face-to-face -face appointments. Whether you're on campus or a distance learner, you can have online appointments set up. The Writing Center is available for everyone, not just students who feel like they're struggling. A students use them as well. Um, the Writing Center does require a 24-hour advan 24 advance notice, uh, but otherwise, um, yeah, take advantage of it. And it's, it's pretty easy. I'm going to type in the chat. The address is simply Writing Center at fullsale.com. Okay, so if you shoot them an email, uh, you can get an appointment set up. Okay, I'm just reading through some of the comments that have been made here. Someone mentioned something about rain. Zachary, I don't know if you're here in Orlando or not. It just started raining here. So yeah, it's a little bit nasty here. Um, here's a little slide discussing why you have to take this course. You can read the quotes that are here or the statistics. Um, usually I don't have to say much about this. I think most people understand the importance of writing. Even the people who swear that, well, they don't like English or they don't understand why they have to take the course because I'm here to study music production or I'm here to study video game design. I think even those people understand deep down inside that being able to communicate both in writing and speech is important, that your ability to write can take you a long way. Okay, even when it comes to applying for jobs, for example, having a well-written cover letter can make sometimes all the difference between you and another candidate. So, yeah, I think people intuitively know the importance of writing. Um, so that's what we're going to do in this course for a month. We're going to try to teach you the fundamentals of writing a solid essay and that those fundamentals you'll be able to carry on through your other courses here and through any type of writing situation you might have to deal with. Okay. Um, so what are we working on this month? This month we're going to take a look at something that's all around us all the time. Right here's a little snapshot of a downtown city with billboards all over the place as a way to kind of show, yeah, this idea of advertising. What you're going to be looking at this month is you're going to choose an ad from an approved list, I'm going to show you the list in just a second, and you're going to uh, create an ad analysis essay. Okay, it's 
I'm going to try to convince you that it's much more straightforward than you would think, uh, because ad analysis is really about simply taking a very close look at an ad, either a television ad or a print ad, and explaining how it operates, explaining how the ad does what it does, essentially. Okay, that's really as simple as this is. And we're going to brainstorm a little bit and take a look at some sample ads, see if we can spot anything interesting going on in the ad that we might want to say about it. Uh, but that's what we're doing, okay? And this class is set up so that every week we're taking you through a different stage in the writing process. I think that's what the next slide is going to show. Let's take a peek. Yeah, there's just a reminder of what we're doing. How do, well, how do advertisers persuade their audiences? Okay, because normally, yeah, we watch ads, right? And we, we don't pay much attention. We leave the room, we go get something to drink. If you have technology, TiVos and stuff like that, you may even fast forward through commercials. Uh, but if we slow down to look at them, we'll notice lots of interesting things. Um, ad agencies are hired by corporations to produce these ads, usually spending millions of dollars. And nothing that appears in an ad is accidental. So really ad analysis is about slowing down, taking a close look at the ad, and identifying some of those important choices that the ad's creators made. Okay? And actually, that's something I'm going to repeat often during these lectures, this idea that you have to be able to spot three things going on in the ad, three interesting things, three interesting elements or aspects, three interesting moves that the ad makes. Maybe that's a good way to put it. Three moves that the ad makes, okay? And like I said, we'll brainstorm and practice in just a little bit. Uh, let me skip this for a second. There we go. Uh, here's a little diagram of the writing process. And like I said, this course is set up so that we're taking students through each stage of the writing process. So this week we're here, brainstorming. Okay, next week we're going to be kind of here in these two areas, research, investigate. Yes, there will be some research required for this essay. Um, and organizing your ideas. Come week three, you're going to write a draft of your paper. And in week four, you're going to get feedback, both from me and your peers, and you're going to revise the paper and hand it in again. And again okay, so that's what we're doing this month. Every week in the course is devoted to a separate stage in the writing process. And there's just a kind of repetition of what I just said, what we're doing week to week. So why don't we jump into things, both feet forward, and start talking about ads, okay? I think it's better kind of just to do this instead of me lecturing. Let's just get our kind of uh, hands dirty and see if we can spot some interesting things that are going on in an advertisement. So actually, that one, hold on. That one I want to look at second. I have another one prepared. Uh, this is an ad from Jeep. Now, I, I need to make something very clear. You don't see both halves of this image at once. The reason it's being shown is so you can see the visual trick. You only see one half, like here, right? You look at it and you see that it's a giraffe's head. Okay, and the visual trick is because you can see the word Jeep appears above and below the image. And I don't know if you can see this very clearly, but there's a little tagline that says, see whatever you want to see. And both the brand name and the tagline are written right side up and upside down. The upside down, I think, is because it's trying to get you to look at the image upside down, because when you do, you realize that it's, yeah, a little nifty visual trick. Looked at one way, it's a giraffe's head. Look at, looked at another way, it's a full standing penguin. Right? Pretty nifty little trick there. Okay, but this is a print ad. What are some things we can say about this? Or what, what immediately perhaps stands out to you that's interesting? And, and before, actually, let me give you a little bit of help first. Here, let me open up a new document. Maybe a good way to think about what to look for is to think in terms of formal qualities. By formal qualities, I mean kind of like technical stuff. So for example, color. If it's a, this is a print ad, so this doesn't apply, but a television commercial could. Sound, camera work, uh, layout, uh, imagery. Okay, so what else? Uh, music. Okay, so lots of like the technical stuff. Um, yeah, color, sound, camera work, layout, imagery, music, and so on. Or 
thematic qualities. So this is kind of the non-technical stuff. So issues of theme, character, or cast, uh, symbol, plot. I'm going to put that in parentheses because sometimes commercials have stories or plots kind of involved. Um, yeah, basically kind of like the more human side of things. So if we think about, and let me blow this up a little bit, make it larger. Okay. So if we think about in terms of formal qualities or thematic qualities, what are some things that immediately stand out to you in this ad? Zachary said something about safari or the Arctic. Okay. The, definitely we, we, we link Jeep to, yeah, outdoorsiness, right? Jeep is a kind of vehicle that can take you on safari or possibly through the Arctic, right? It's a kind of vehicle that you could possibly go to see giraffes or penguins. But considering the stuff that I just mentioned, either form, formal qualities or thematic qualities, what are some things that maybe stand out to you in this ad? And don't worry about it being right or wrong. We're just brainstorming at this point. Uh, what can we say about this ad? And, and don't worry so much about trying to read between the lines. That's not what ad analysis is about. It's not about coming up with some deeply, uh, yeah, symbolic or reading between the lines interpretation. It's just analysis, again, explaining how the ad does what it does. So any thoughts about things that just seem interesting or important? Like if you were an ad creator and you were paid to design this hand, this ad, like what choices were made that seemed kind of, yeah, possibly interesting to you? We have a bunch of people present. So Zachary says, no color makes it easy, easier to see the images. Okay. Uh, and Zachary also says both images. Okay. Uh, that's good. I'm going to come back to the trend system. They wanted to make it viewable by all angles. Okay. I'm not sure what that means exactly. Um, Zachary, I'd correct you a little bit. I wouldn't say there's no color. There is a color here, right? And I'll help you a little bit. I'll say that the ad's use of color is interesting. It is important. And look at the look at the background. Okay. The color is this kind of beige, right? This kind of sandy burlap, right? The quality. And it's not just a, a plain background. It's this kind of fabric-y, textile-y background, right? It looks woven, kind of like burlap, as you said. Uh, yeah, that's important. Like, why would an ad designer do that? Why choose this color and that kind of textile-like background? Why would that work for Jeep, but not, for example, Lexus or Hyundai or Honda? I seem to be mentioning all Japanese cars <laughs> or Cadillac. Uh, Trenton says it's not sleek. It's kind of rough. Okay, good. Well, why would it be important that it's kind of rough looking? Zachary says, I was looking at the text draft alone, having only black to shaded color. Okay, I'm, I'm not following that completely. Jonathan says something key. Yeah, it gives a rugged, outdoorsy feel. Okay, good. Does this, is this starting to make sense? Because look how we started from Zachary threw out the idea of color, just kind of threw it out there. But now that we've been talking about it, we see that color isn't accidental, right? And as Michael says, it gives, it hints at the nature of the vehicle. Yes. So that's analysis, right? We've, we've identified something that at first seems kind of, I don't know, unimportant or something you wouldn't even think twice about, the ad's color and the quality of the background, right? Because this quality of the background reminds you of, as Zachary says, burlap, or I think of like a canvas tent or khaki clothing, right? And what do all these things have in common? They're kind of outdoorsy. They're kind of rugged. And that fits Jeep, doesn't it? Because isn't that the kind of image that comes to mind when we think of Jeep, right? You think of Jeep and you think of that classic moon buggy-like vehicle, uh, a vehicle that may not even have doors or, uh, or a, a, what do you call it, a roof, right? Stick shift. Now, true, Jeep actually has a huge line of vehicles, and most people's interests in Jeep are probably more suburban than Saharan, but that's the classic image of Jeep, right? It's that classic out, uh, outdoorsy, off-roading vehicle. It's the vehicle that you could take to Africa, and see giraffes or go down to the 
rocky tip of South America to see penguins. Penguins. Uh, okay, so yeah, color or just in general, the background that they've chosen is important. So that's analysis. So we've got one thing already, okay, use of color. Uh, someone else mentioned imagery, and I think we're kind of beginning to answer our own questions here because we kind of started, I think, unlocking uh, how this ad operates. The imagery here uses this, yeah, it's a clever trick. Looked at one way, it's one animal. Looked at another way, it's another. But why this imagery, right? Why animal imagery? I think we've answered it, but okay, I'll throw it out there anyway, just to make sure. Uh, well, why not have a reversible image of, I don't know, uh, a truck or uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think what other, other imagery. Could you, why, why animal imagery? Jeep engines run like penguins. <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. But yes, okay, Trent, that's clear. Animals are outdoors in nature. Yes, again. Yeah, Michael, it is true. People do like animals, but it's not that random, okay? Because I don't think that was the main reason. Again, I think it's closer to the idea that, again, a Jeep is that kind of vehicle that we associate with these kinds of things. I think uh, Zachary said at the beginning, safari, right? Isn't that the classic image we also think of when we think of Jeep? That's the kind of vehicle you would take on a safari. Uh, so, okay, so we've identified two important things, the background or the use of color and its choice in imagery. Okay, so we've already identified two important things. As long as we could come up with a third, we're in business because later I'm going to talk about thesis statements. And for this assignment, yeah, you'll have to write a thesis, which is kind of a one sentence preview of where your essay is going. Typically, the thesis is your final sentence of the introduction paragraph. And in the thesis for your ad analysis paper, you should be identifying three specific things that are going on in the ad. Because those three th specific things are going to be the things that you talk about in depth in the body of your paper. So here we've already gotten two. Okay. And actually, let me show. And you'll have this available to you later in the month. But, okay, that's the worksheet you're going to work on this week. I'm going to show that later. I have... I've written an ad analysis paper, and you'll get to see it in week three. You'll get to see an outline version of it in week two. Uh, but yeah, I decided I wanted to do all the assignments that you guys do for a couple reasons. One, I think it's important to do the assignments because it helps me realize what kind of uh, activity you're doing. Plus, it's it's incredibly useful because I thought I would just bang out an essay in an hour, and it took me a lot longer than that. So it reminds me that these activities are challenging. Okay, but I've written, yeah, paper. I've kind of made up a, a name. That's not my name, but. And so, yeah, come week three, you'll have an example of an ad analysis paper, this one on Jeep. Also a past student paper on Diet Coke. We're going to look at a Diet Coke ad in just a second. Uh, but as you can see here, yeah, I've written an introduction. So I'm not going to read this whole thing, but. You know, Jeep, the well-known brand, practically markets itself with its reputation for ruggedness, independence, and adventure. So just what we've been talking about. Then I use a nifty quote about how Jeep is one of the most copied brands of American vehicles. And then I riff on the idea of, yeah, what we've been talking about. What idea comes to mind when you just hear the word Jeep? The Jeep spirit and the loyalty that this motor car inspires is hardwired into our cultural consciousness. One can easily picture a driver behind the wheel of a Jeep, downshifting around a snaking mountain bend or kicking up dust through the sun-baked Australian outback, or zooming past zebras grazing the Serengeti. And then I transition into the ad. It is perhaps fitting, then, that Jeep's see-whatever-you-want-to-see ad embraces the sport of feelings that such a vehicle invokes. Then I briefly describe the ad, and we're going to talk about this next week, that your audience for your essay is the general reader. The general reader knows nothing about this class, this assignment, may not know anything about the ad. So I briefly describe the ad for the general reader. And then here's my thesis. We're going to return to this at the end of the session, okay? So don't don't worry. We'll return to defining what thesis statements are. Through this, the, excuse me, through the use of simple color, okay? Playful imagery and a double meaning tagline. So yes, color, background, and the imagery were two of my points that I decided to focus my analysis on. The third point I chose was the tagline, see whatever you want to see. Um, mostly because it's it's kind of a double meaning tagline, right? Because it's referring, see whatever you want to see, refers to the image, 
you can see whatever you want to see in the image, either a giraffe or a penguin. But it also seems to speak to something larger, right? That in a Jeep, you can go see whatever you want to see. So, yeah, there's my thesis where I identify the three things I want to talk about. And then these three things become, here, let me see if I can highlight that. They become the focus of my three middle paragraphs, body paragraphs. So here's a paragraph completely about the ad's use of color. Right, there's a clear topic sentence. The ad is an exercise in simplicity, especially in its use of color. And then I talk about color, that the ad's creator, Leo Burnett Paris, has chosen a simple background of camel mesh. The ad's beige background brings to mind fabric and textiles, a burlap sack, as Zachary said, a tawny canvas tent, khaki clothing. The color might also suggest environment, dusty paths, windswept dunes, even the debris kicked up in a Jeep's wheels wake. The color choice is no accident, for it reinforces Jeep's outdoorsy image. Okay, that's analysis. I'm explaining three interesting choices that the ad's creators made. Okay, three interesting moves that the ad makes. And then I go on to my next two things. Okay, it's playful use of imagery. I describe that imagery and explain it. Okay, that it's not accident. And then I have a, another paragraph about the ad's use of a tagline, etc. Okay, I'm obviously not going to read the entire paper out loud here. That would be incredibly dull. <laughs> but you do have this essay uh, as a kind of model essay come week three, along with a past student paper on a Diet Coke ad, we're gonna, which we're going to look at in just a second. But is this starting to click to people who are here? Let's see. We have David, Jonathan, Michael, Paula. Rodell, hope I'm saying that right, Trenton, uh, Zachary, Vikisha. Uh, okay, yes, because this is what you're going to have to do. And let me show you where you're going to find your ads. Yeah, sadly, you do not get to choose whatever ad you want. I have an approved list. Um, and you can find it here in the week one activities. It's right under assignment overview, the essay. Okay. And if I scroll down here. Here's a list of ads you have to choose from. You have uh, five television commercials and three print ads. Okay. Uh, my advice is to look at all of them. And my other major piece of advice is choose the one where you can identify three things pretty quickly or pretty easily. Okay. Because sometimes a student picks Apple because they love Apple. Who doesn't? iPhones and iPads. But then they don't know what to say about the ad. Okay, so make sure that you choose an ad that you're comfortable talking about. Or here's one on Call of Duty. Lots of people love video games, so they're, may, they may be interested in that one. Or McDonald's, right? Again, who doesn't love McDonald's? Uh, but yeah, but don't get stuck with an ad that ultimately you're unsure what to say about. Now, I'm here to help, of course. I'm not going to leave you hanging. Um, I'm going to give you ideas if you're struggling. I'll point some things out. Uh, but certainly, you should be comfortable with the ad overall, okay? Because this is the ad you're going to choose now and you're going to stick with for the entire month. And in a little bit, I'm going to show what the week one major activity is. It's a worksheet that needs to be completed. Uh, but yeah, you'll begin by choosing an ad that you're comfortable with. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look at another ad. Let's keep practicing. Now, this next ad is actually an older ad. It's from the early 1970s. But I still like to use it because this ad could exist today. There are lots of retro ads that play on the 70s, or I don't know if anybody remembers the Jose Cuervo ad that was popular about a year ago. It was featured the Rolling Stones. They don't appear in the ad, but the uh, the idea is that it's supposedly the tour flight of the Rolling Stones when they were on tour, and it's got a cast of characters, larger-than-life characters who look like they've just stepped out of the 1970s. Um, so yeah, it could be a retro ad that could be released today, but what can we say about this ad? What stands out? Okay. In terms of either formal qualities, remember technical stuff, color, lighting, layout, camera, or thematic qualities, theme, symbol, character. Trenton says she needs some clothes. Okay. Well, she is wearing clothes. But uh, Trenton, even though you, I think you're trying to make a joke, I do think there's something important in what you said. Okay. The, 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 right. But, but what does that mean? We're adults, so let's not shy away from this. It's not an accident that she's standing there braless. 
And what does that imply? What does that mean? Risky. Okay. I don't know if you're trying to say risky or ris risque. Uh, risque is spelled like this, usually with an accent right over the E, which I can't reproduce. Okay, good. It's, it's definitely targeted at men. It's risque. I think maybe that's the word Zachary was going for. Risque, which means kind of like sexual. Yeah. Um, okay, so the, there's the image of the woman. Already, that's, a th that's an analysis point. That could be one of our thesis points, okay? That the image of the woman is important. Because, again, what's the, what's the idea here? The woman, what, what kind of adjectives would we use to describe her? And let's try to be polite. Uh, beyond sexual, okay? Like, what is a woman standing like that, not wearing a bra? What does that indicate? How do we describe her? Powerful. Okay, good. Yes. Outgoing. Sure. Independent, right? She's her own person. Bold. That would be another choice. And, I mean, actually, let me take this another direction. This tagline, your mother wouldn't like it. What wouldn't, what wouldn't your mother like in this ad? The woman, yes. But in connection, what else? What is the woman being connected to? Yeah, David, I think, nails it. Fast lifestyle, fast car, underlying theme. Right, the woman and the car are connected. Right, the car is red. That's also kind of a sexual color. So if you're a certain type of man, this car, also symbolized by this woman, might appeal to you. Your mother might not like it. Your mother would disapprove. Right? Your mother would shake her head and say, why the, you know, who is this girl you're dating? Or why do you need this flashy car? But the ad is playing on that idea. The ad is, the ad is appealing to a certain type of male audience that, yeah, likes that image. As David says, middle class bachelor demographic. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty safe, right? Or the old cliche, someone gets to be around 40 or so, wants to be young again. Uh, yeah, you might like all the baggage that comes with this this automobile that you'll look dangerous independent bold risque yourself because if you're driving this kind of car maybe you'd be with this kind of woman trent says she's kind of looking at you as if she's expecting you to drive okay good i've never heard that mentioned before but i yeah i like that there's something about her boldly looking at the camera right almost like she's looking directly at you the viewer hold on a sec i gotta blow my nose real quickly <laughs> greatest audio in the recording. I apologize for that. Okay, so definitely there's the image of the woman um, and the car itself. What other things do we notice in this ad? Like I said, don't worry too much about right or wrong at this point. Just throw out things that sound interesting or seem interesting or that just stand out to you. Zachary says movies. Okay. Trenton says it's really orange and red. Okay, good. Color is working overtime in this one too. Color and lighting. Yeah, good, Paula. Good. The lighting. And let me see if this makes sense to you. The lighting and the color seems kind of... Maybe seedy is too strong a term, but you, do you know what I mean? It's kind of like we can't quite tell. This might be early evening, dusk. It's that kind of in-between period where, I don't know, it's... I don't want to say it's a dangerous part of night, but it's that kind of in-between world. Okay? it's It's sort of... Oh gosh, I can't think of another adjective besides seedy, and that's a little bit too intense. But um, Zachary says warm. It is warm, but I'd, I'd say it's also, it's almost like the, the lighting and the color is also, it's mellow, but it's sexual mellow. Does that make sense? Trent says, right, like a golden hour, dusk kind of time. Right, and there's something about that hour that fits with the mood of this, this ad as well. Uh, but certainly, you could definitely discuss color and lighting in terms of it just being bright and orange and red and how that could also be kind of a sexual have a sexual tinge to it or you could concentrate on yeah the environment of it okay and someone mentioned movies i don't know if you can tell because i don't know how big of a movie buff you are but i recognize what this poster is and the poster is no coincidence you can see it says marlon brando and i already know the film because i can see it but even if it wasn't half cut off, I already know it's the movie Last Tango in Paris. Has anybody ever heard of that movie or know what that movie is? 
Well, you should Wikipedia it sometime. Uh, it's it's a it's a brilliant movie. It was nominated for Academy Awards, but it is a highly sexualized film. I mean, when I say highly sexual, I, I mean even today it's intense. It was X rated when it came out, um, and yeah, it's it's an adult. Fi- I, well, actually, I shouldn't say an adult film. That's a euphemism for pornography, but <laughs> it's a film for adults. I mean, it is incredibly even by twenty seventeen standards, it is sexually bold. And I'm going to tell you, that's not coincidence, okay? The fact that she's standing in front of this movie theater with this poster. Again, the car, as someone who was, I think it was David, who said that, yeah, the entire connection here is sexual danger. Or how did he, I'm going to, I'm trying to scroll up, scroll up, because David said it better than I could say it. Fast lifestyle, fast car, underlying theme, right? That everything about this environment from the color to the lighting to the image of the woman to even the the film that's being shown it's not accident okay zachary says now it's all starting to come together good because this is what ad ad analysis is and here we have lots of things to talk about so if we were trying to identify three important things well color could be one or color and lighting together if you don't those could be either separate things or they could be discussed together uh the image of the woman Okay, the connection or the the ads tagline, that's important too. your mother wouldn't like it. Okay. by the way, ad analysis is not. I want to say this early because I do see sometimes students struggle with ad analysis in the sense that sometimes students just describe what they see on the page and that's not analysis. Or they literally explain things um, and that's not quite analysis either. However, here's a good way to think of it. Ad analysis, you should be pointing out things that on the surface, maybe the viewer hasn't noticed before. But as soon as you mention them, the the reader thinks, oh my gosh, that's so true. So for example, when we were talking about the Jeep ad, if the comments about the Jeep ad's background, why it has animal imagery, if that immediately made sense, like, oh yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Of course it would choose a beige burlap type background because it's Jeep. That's what you should be doing with whatever ad you choose. You're pointing out things, not that are super read between the lines or super interpretive, just things that would make the reader think, oh, wow, that's true. Yeah. Didn't think of that. Didn't notice it. But yes, that's absolutely true. Let's see. David says it's inviting the consumer to live that lifestyle by buying their product. Yes. And that's what iAds try to do, right? They try to sell you on the idea that their product is somehow going to fulfill some sort of deep need that you have. And here it's playing upon men's desires to, yeah, if you buy this car, you're going to be looked at in a certain kind of way, right? A little bit dangerous, a little bit bold, okay? Yeah, your mother wouldn't approve, but you kind of like that because, well, gosh darn it, you want that kind of car because maybe that kind of car attracts this kind of woman. Notice there's this guy here who's kind of staring either at the girl or the car or both. That's no accident either. But yeah, I think we have at least three things to talk about here. The image of the woman, the use of color and lighting, the ads tagline, the overall environment, right? The movie theater, the movie poster. We have plenty of things to talk about. So let's take a look at another ad. Okay, we already talked about all this stuff. There was a secondary slide that accompanied this this advertisement. And I'm going to, hold on, let me copy this URL into your chat window. I'll play it as well, but the problem is you may not be able to hear the sound on my, uh, (laughs) there we go. You may not be able to hear the sound, even though I'll try to crank it up. Okay, this is for Diet Coke. And again, try to identify things that just stand out to you. Don't worry about making sense out of them. Just, what do you notice? One more time. Okay, there we go. Um, I played it twice. So what are things that stand out in this ad? Again, think about it in terms of threes. We're trying to identify three interesting things. Three 
important moves that the ad makes. Uh, Vacation says showing the slim of the cup. Okay. I think you're saying showing how slender and slim the glass is. Yeah, there, there is something about that. Uh, definitely. Okay, good. Trenton, the music is sle uh, sexy sleek. Bingo. Music is very important here, right? It's got that funky kind of, yeah, we associate that kind of music with, I don't know, again, kind of a sexy type thing. And uh, Vakisha, I hope I'm saying that name correctly, she does point out something important here, the, the slenderness, the slimness of the glass, because what is the comparison that's being made? Yes, Zachary, diet definitely equals skinny. But what is being played upon here? If in the last ad, as David explained, there was a fast car equals fast lifestyle. Here, what is the tall glass of Coke being compared to? Okay, Trenton, that's a good point, too. There is use of color. The red pops out against the silver background. That is true. Absolutely. Right? That's not an accident. Your eye immediately goes to the word Coke because it's in red. Uh, let me go back to the very beginning of the ad. And I'm going to pause it right there. Diet Coke presents tall, dark, and handsome. So I, what's the comparison here? The tall glass of Coke is being compared to what? Zachary says it's when it used the words handsome, kind of implied masculinity. As Paula says, male. Yes, right? Tall, dark, and handsome. The cliched uh, ideal of what a good looking guy is supposed to be, except here it's not a guy. It's a Diet Coke. <laughs> and I don't know if this was what Vakisha was talking about as well, but it's, it's yes, it's partly the shape of the glass, tall, thin, and slender, like a person, except it's not a person. It's a glass of Diet Coke, but also the camera work, right? Going slowly up the glass, that sort of panning of the camera. Haven't you seen that in movies before? It's usually women who are objectified. You see the camera like go up, start at the ankle, slowly go up the woman's leg, right? It kind of scans the body from top to bottom or from bottom to top. Here, the same thing, except again, it's not a person who's being scanned. It's a tall, slender glass of Diet Coke. But do you see the comparison? That this is typically camera work that we would associate with a, uh, with a person, almost like a reverse striptease? Zachary makes reference to the naked gun. Really long legs. Yeah, though that's what it, I, I, I know what you're talking about. I've seen that movie, right? Where uh, Leslie Nielsen says something like her legs went on for ever and ever, and the camera keeps panning up <laughs> endlessly. I think it's, uh, what's her name? Priscilla Presley, Elvis's first wife. Uh, and isn't it the joke in the movie? It keeps scanning up her legs, like the legs are never ending. It keeps going on and on and on. Well, that's what's happening here. Same thing. Okay, so yeah, there's a logical connection that people make when they see this ad, even if they don't think about it, that, yes, it's kind of, well, it's humorous, so there's definitely a use of humor. Uh, but yeah, instead of a person being tall, dark, and handsome, it's the glass of Diet Coke, and that's reinforced by camera work, by the music, okay? And yeah, even the, the wording, the language, tall, dark, and handsome. So we already got three things we could talk about. Okay, there's, 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 the font is kind of cool, too. Here's one of the things, though. Ultimately, you're going to have to choose what are the three most important aspects. For example, you just looked at, I gave a brief preview of the Jeep essay that I wrote, okay, based on the Jeep ad. And I chose to discuss the ad's use of color, its imagery, and its tagline. And I got three rich paragraphs out of that. Actually, that's not it. And that's not it. Why do I keep, how does my paper keep disappearing? Where'd it go? There it is. <laughs> so you can see I got three, yeah, rich paragraphs about color, about imagery, and about tagline. So you'll ultimately have to choose three things about your chosen ad that you can get a lot of mileage out of too. So for example, yes, the choice of font or the choice of color, right? Putting the Coke in red, definitely all true. But if you feel like you don't quite have a paragraph's worth of content there, then maybe you need to focus on three other things, okay? And you'll figure this out when it comes to brainstorming and then ultimately writing the paper. 
Okay, actually, that went really well. Uh, you guys jumped right in there and started identifying things. So that's awesome. So I'm going to return to my presentation because I want to talk about thesis statements and explain what your assignment is, the first major assignments. Okay, let me skip past that. Um, your assignment for this week is to complete a worksheet. Okay, and we're going to look at the worksheet in just a second. Um, it's a brainstorming worksheet for obviously generating ideas. Um, but one of the questions on the worksheet asks you to come up with a thesis statement. Okay, this is, yeah, a thesis statement helps narrow the focus for your paper. Remember that closing sentence at the end of my first paragraph in the Jeep essay? And I highlighted in yellow through the, I think it said through the use of uh, simple color, playful imagery, and a double meaning tagline. The Jeep, see whatever you want to see, add, blah, blah, blah. So you need to do a similar thing. Write a single sentence that identifies the three important aspects of your ad that you're going to discuss in detail when it comes time to write your paper. And I apologize for this shadowing effect. I didn't mean to have that at all, <laughs> but it, when it copied over, so I know it's going to, your eyes feel like they're blurred, and I apologize for that, but let's see if we could just put up with it for a second, okay? Uh, there's a definition of a thesis statement. One sentence preview, preview of your essay. The thesis is typically the final sentence of the introduction paragraph. So here's a thesis statement for the Diet Coke ad. The Diet Coke ad uses seductive camera work, sexual music, and a double entendre tagline in order to appeal to female consumers, playing on the ideals of heteronormative romance. That's just a fancy way of saying yeah, that the ad is, well, you know, playing with notions of boy likes girl, girl likes boy, right? You, it's it's clearly not aimed at same-sex viewers, okay? People are in same-sex relationships. It's probably aimed at female consumers because they're, I've read somewhere, they're the main drinkers of Diet Coke, and Coke Zero was created for men to be able to buy a diet product that would seem less feminine, even though I've drank Diet Coke all my life too. Never thought of it as a female type drink, but I guess that's why I read the, the Zero Coke Zero line was, was created for that reason. But you can see it lists three things, right? Seductive camera work, sexual music, double entendre tagline, tall, dark, and handsome. And here's the thesis for Jeep. Through the use of simple color, playful imagery, and a double meaning tagline. So both kind of emphasize tagline. Uh, the see whatever you want to see ad appeals to the inner, inner adventurer inside everyone to unlock a hidden enthusiasm for Jeep. Okay, so you can kind of see the main parts here. You'll name the ad, Diet Coke jeep you'll list your three things uh actually you know what let me get away from this for just one second here's a simple template you can kind of follow uh a thesis basically takes this form and it's at its most basic okay the blank ad uses blank blank and blank oops in order to blank <laughs> that's a lot of blanks but you could see right you just have to feel fill in the gaps the jeep ad uses color imagery and tagline in order to and that final blank should be a general kind of statement of purpose what the ad is seeking to accomplish okay or the diet coke ad uses okay and you can rearrange the order of things so for instance uh where am i here we go. So for instance, the first one kind of follows that template exactly. The Diet Coke ad uses blank, blank, and blank in order to blank. But the Jeep one, yeah, I, I kind of reverse the order of things. The word Jeep doesn't appear until the end. So you can play with the wording, you can play with the order, but essentially your thesis is going to have those elements. Okay, it's going to name the ad, it's going to name your three important aspects that you've noticed identified in the ad, and it's going to make some general statement about what the ad is trying to accomplish. Okay. In the case of Diet Coke, it's appealing to female consumers, playing on the ideals of heterosexual romance. In the Jeep ad, it's appealing to the inner adventure inside everyone to unlock enthusiasm for Jeep. Okay, So part of your worksheet is going to be to create a thesis like this for whichever ad you choose, whether it's Call of Duty or Allstate or McDonald's or Altoids Mints. Okay, And let me quickly show the worksheet. So we're just about done. Good, Trenton. 
I think ad analysis is a lot of fun. And you guys are in good shape because I, I can promise this. People who attend or watch the lectures after the fact, because these lectures are required, they're not optional. Um, yeah, you, you all, you, the people either attend or review after the fact tend to do much better on assignments because they don't get lost with what ad analysis is. Um, and I'm definitely very happy with the way the session has gone so far. So I have no problem that you'll be able to choose your ad. But here's the worksheet. Okay, and it begins with some basic questions. Like what's the title of the ad you've chosen? For what company or organization was this ad created? Um, <clears throat> let me quickly point out for number three, it says describe the ad as if you're explaining it. Uh, you know, it's visuals, it's details to someone who has never seen it before. And some people do a great job of that, even writing a long description, but they kind of forget what the rest of the question asks for. Be sure to identify specific details that stand out to you, such as, and here's a huge list of things, okay, important aspects that might exist in your ad. Okay, so yeah, you, you are describing the ad in detail, but you're also trying to identify these important details. Why? Because in question four, you're then going to interpret those details. So for Jeep, in my detailed description, I mention the color, the quality of the ad's background. In number four, then I would explain, yeah, why was that done? Okay. Uh, then you have some questions that are, again, pretty basic. What product? This is a literal question. What product is it selling? Uh, but then this one is a little bit more subtle here. What need? idea, lifestyle, or attitude is the ad selling. So for example, for Jeep, it might be, yeah, this sense of adventure, right? That when you purchase a Jeep, you're not just buying a car, you're buying into the kind of Jeep, what's the right word I'm looking for here? Uh, symbol isn't the, the perfect word, but you know what I mean, right? When you buy a Jeep, you might climb into that vehicle and, and think that, yeah, you haven't just bought a car, but you've bought into this long tradition of what Jeep means. You might feel a little bit more rugged, adventurous. You may never actually literally take that Jeep off-road, but you feel like you kind of could because that's part of what you've purchased. Okay, so ads don't just sell the product itself. It also sells an idea because if you can buy into the idea, there's a greater chance you'll buy the product. And then discuss who do you think the ad is targeting? Uh, this one needs a little bit of explanation, maybe, because sometimes students get confused. It says, list three possible tactics or techniques. That's just those three things you've identified, okay? Those three important aspects, those three moves that the ad makes. And then those get listed in your thesis, okay? And it asks for you to come up with two thesis statements just because maybe one will be a little bit better than the other, either in terms of wording or in terms of the three things that it, that it lists, okay? And then you have some example thesis statements. And finally, there's a question about research. Okay. And it's not asking you to share URLs. It's not asking you to actually do the research yet. And it's asking you for your research, research ideas, like what you might research. So for Jeep, uh, some basic research into color theory would probably be helpful. Um, for the Diet Coke ad, maybe research into music, uh, music and advertising, or even uh, sexuality in advertising or something. Anyway, question 10 is basically just asking you to kind of, yeah, to share with me what sorts of ideas you have about what you might research. Because as we'll discuss next week, you do need three pieces of research for your paper. Okay, so I want you to start thinking about what you might research now rather than later. Does that make sense? And you do have a sample worksheet to look at. Every activity comes with samples. So let me go into one of these sections. And this worksheet assignment is this guy right here. Step one, preparing to write. And you can read through the instructions on your own. By the way, you have this video that's included as well. This video can be one of your three sources, if you wish. So that's kind of nifty. Uh, it's called Pathos, Logos, and Ethos in Advertising. Um, here's the worksheet itself that you'll complete. And the samples are always a little bit hidden because they're kind of actually in the heading. But here you see step one, preparing to write worksheet example. 
If you click on it, you can see a previous student's effort. This is on the Diet Coke ad. These are always average examples of work. So this is probably, I don't know, a B-ish effort. Okay, but you do get a reasonable example of someone who's already completed the worksheets. So that's kind of nice too. So keep in mind that for every activity, major activity of this course, you always have an example. I'm not gonna get into it, but next week, you're going to work on an outline. And for that, you have two examples. I've created an outline and we have a past student example of an outline as well. Okay, so make sure that you take use of that. And really, that's about what I wanted to cover for this first week. I wanted to give you as much information as possible so that you're comfortable with that analysis and that you know how to complete this worksheet. Um, I'll, I'm here to answer questions if you have them. Okay, if you're perfectly comfortable with what we've went over, I'm not going to force you to stay here. You're allowed to go and enjoy the rest of your, ev your evening. I thank you so much for attending. We'll do this again next week at the same time. Uh, again, I'm going to hang out for a few minutes and answer questions, and I'll keep the recording going because sometimes people ask interesting questions that others uh, who watch this after the fact like to hear. Okay, so thanks a lot, guys. If you have questions, now it's time to ask them, either about what we've covered in the session or about the first assignment or anything about the class as a whole. And if there are no questions, I will stop the recording in just a second. Good job, by the way, really. It's always nice. I don't know why, but I always get excited when, because some, some months people have a lot of trouble talking about the sample ads, but tonight you guys did great. Jumped right in there, saw things right away. Now you just have to do the exact same thing with your own chosen essays, okay? But hopefully you feel confident that you can, confident that you can do it. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording because it looks like uh, questions are not coming. So the people who are watching at home, thank you very much for watching. We'll do this again next week. I'm stopping the recording now. <laughs>